Shalom saints, Shabbat Shalom. Finally, it's the Sabbath of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, saints, Shalom sister blessings. I can see you've just joined. God bless you. Shalom sister Michelle, sister Navita. Gitahi, welcome. Royalty 5477, Job Center. God bless you. Sister Erica Renee, God bless you. Sister Afeni Miraj Tavares. Oh no, that is Brother Antonio. Shalom, Brother Antonio, and thank you for your gift and your seed. The good Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Bom dia, irmã. Obrigada pelo, pela oferta. Obrigada. Recebi. Que o Senhor te continue a abençoar abundantemente, a abrir os caminhos para ti, para que possas ser uma bênção para o seu reino, em nome de Jesus. Good morning, Brother Nigel. Good morning, good morning, Nakwezi Lilibeth. Good morning, Brother Garrett Morgan. Good morning, good morning, Sister Angie. Good morning, Sister Antoinette. Good morning, Sister Melanie. Sister Sadie, good morning. Rose, I'm going to call you after the live stream. Expect my call, Sister Rose. Good morning, Aquesi. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Blessings. Once again, good morning. I see you. DW, good morning, beloved. Brother Robert, good morning. Sim, Sim, good morning. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Vivian. Jerry Stewart, Brother Jerry, you are welcome. Nice to see you, Brother Jerry. God bless you. Sister Aura, Shalom. Shalom, those liking the live stream. God bless you. Blue Oceans, Shalom. Brother Dwayne, Shalom and welcome. Sister Portia Slick, good morning. God bless you. Joyce, Sister Elizabeth, good morning. Sister Winnie, 22. Shalom. Shalom, Sister Antoinette, once again. Thank you for the gift, beloved sister. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, saints. Kanima. Shalom. DW. Shalom. Shalom, Sister DW, for the gifts. God bless you and keep you and increase you in Jesus' name. Sister J, God bless you. Sister Michelle Clark, greetings, beloved. Kingdom greetings. Amen. Sister Elizabeth, Shalom. Sister Zia, Shalom. Sister Sharice, Shalom. Matuma, Shalom. Brother Grant, Shalom. Shalom, Saints. Watson, Andrea Watson. Sister Andrea Watson, Shalom. Sister Salinha, 68, Shalom. Shalom, Shalom. No, we are not fasting, Sister Blessing. It's finished. Remember, it's always 15 days. I was the one fasting yesterday for deliverance for those of oppressed by witchcraft. But you are not fasting corporately, so don't worry. Sister Alisa, good morning. Sister Daniela, shalom. Sister Pamela, shalom. Shalom, Sister Marcia. Shalom, it's Q. Shalom, Sister Elizabeth. G Mac, shalom. Shalom. Thank you, Brother Dwayne, for the gift. God bless you and increase you in Jesus' name. No Zulu. Shalom. Shalom, saints. Shalom. So, saints, it's enough of us here on this live stream today. And this live stream is titled, Removing Mark of Rejection. Yes, those of you here, saints, that that is your problem, stick around. Those of you that whatever job you apply, rejection. Somebody likes you and they are making a move. Once they sense that you are also interested. Rejection. You've applied for credit. Rejection. You apply for college. Rejection. Everywhere you go, it seems that you are always rejected and despised. If this is you, this live stream today is going to remove every mark of rejection from your life. The blood of Jesus is going to remove the spirit, the mark of rejection. And I'm going to explain to you, how do you, how do you, have you found yourself in that situation? Why are you rejected, despised? These are curses, but I'm going to give you explanation. Sister Lori, you are welcome. God bless you. Sister Janet, Shalom. AGC Wholesale, Shalom. Shalom. Oh, glory be to God. Saints. It is important that we do this prayer against rejection because many children of God are under this spirit of rejection that oppresses them. Everywhere they go, rejection. 
everything they try to do rejection can you hear me saying somebody sister sadie says she has lost sound can everybody hear me clearly yeah all right saints let us consecrate this live stream so that the enemy will not sabotage us today that you will not get delivered from your problem that you came here to receive solution from god because of sound because of whatever it is technical difficulties are of satan join me in prayer saints let us stand in agreement that this live stream will be prosperous that deliverance will take place restoration will take place and that people will be set free from the mark of rejection yes lord sister gail you are welcome god bless you and thank you for the gift may the good lord continue to increase you in jesus name brother ricky blessings to you let us pray father lord in the mighty name of jesus it's another day a sabbath father lord and we thank you for the gift of life we thank you for the holy spirit that is already here with us because the holy spirit knows that we are gathered here in the name of your son jesus to connect with you today to hear your word lord god and to receive from you deliverance father lord we thank you for your presence we worship you we magnify your holy and precious name we give you all honor glory power adon adoration lord you are our adonai you are the root of our salvation our ancient rock of ages oh lord god you are our strong tower in which we run when we need deliverance today father lord i'm asking you in the mighty name of jesus once again be merciful unto us remember that you have sent your son jesus christ to die for us on the cross of calvary for the remission of our sins you have allowed your son to come and pay our penalty and we have accepted your son jesus christ as our lord and savior and because of his shed blood on the cross of calvary we were reconciled with you lord god to have sweet fellowship with you lord father lord i thank you for your presence i thank you for what you have done what you are doing and about to do almighty god i give you all honor i give you all adoration lord god only you are holy and worthy of all honor of all power and adoration lord god and we worship you we honor you today lord god we thank you for your presence we thank you father lord for allowing us to be here in the land of the living today to be able father lord to still reconcile still ask for forgiveness still repent it's a grace and that many father lord did not have the chance so lord we thank you for this father lord i i am asking you today for the power of the holy ghost to be manifested in this broadcast this live stream lord jesus i'm covering the live stream all the saints here present including myself with the with your precious blood father lord i'm asking you to arise from heaven to bind all principalities and rulers of darkness that are in line to sabotage this ministration to stop us from receiving from you deliverance today and boycott and create all sorts of problems lord god i'm asking you bind all these principalities and rulers of darkness with everlasting chains of the holy ghost fire cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever never to have power control dominion authority to humiliate us today to destroy us today in the mighty name of jesus father lord send forth your holy spirit to our environment so that we will hear from you lord god today what we need in order to be delivered from the power and the oppression of the kingdom of darkness father lord every agent of darkness that is targeting this live stream to sabotage to curse so that we will not be delivered today lord god father lord remove them with your right hand render them powerless let the holy ghost fire pursue them let the holy ghost fire judge them and burn them to ashes remove them off this live stream father lord with your power and your anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy 
Father Lord, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for all that you did, you were doing and about to do, Almighty God, for us. I thank you in advance for the deliverance that is about to take place. I'm thanking you in advance, Lord God, because yokes have been broken in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father Lord, and give you glory in advance because every mark of rejection has been wiped out by your blood, by the blood of your precious son, Jesus, sent, shed on a cross of Calvary. For the remission of our sins. Father Lord, use me once again as you may. As a vessel to Father Lord, convey a message to your children. That at the sound of my voice, yokes will be broken. Children will come to your presence to be reconciled with you. That death, Father Lord will be defeated, Lord God, and people will come to the manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost in their lives, Lord God. Father Lord, deliver us from every retaliation from the kingdom of darkness. Father Lord, because of such prayers, because of the ministration, deliver us all, Lord God. I cover specifically, Lord Jesus, all the moderators with your precious blood. That Father Lord, anyone pronouncing a curse over them or trying to sabotage their labor today will be completely rendered powerless, arrested by the power of the Holy Ghost. Never to continue to do anything against the moderators. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Saints, as I said and I will continue to say, if the Bible cannot speak to your situation, meaning what? The minister that you follow, it's not bringing the Bible into your hands so that you can get solution to your problems. So that you can learn how to pray. So that you can learn how to defeat the enemy. Then the minister is not being efficient, saints. That is the truth. It is not, there is no point in listening to a message. And you are not repenting of your sins. You are not going forward in your assignment, your calling that God has given you. You are not efficient in prayer. You cannot live a life that is, is righteous. You are as if you are dead. So that means that the minister is not being efficient. So I'm here to say, saints, everything we want from God, he is more than ready to give us in Jesus Christ's name. But we need to do our part. We need to be ready. How do we make ourselves ready for God to continue to work in us? We have to repent of our sins. We have to, to have the desire to live in righteousness. We have to have that this burning desire to do the will of God. And if you have the desire to truly do the will of God, your priority will to be serving God. Your priority will be to please God. You will have in your heart as a priority to go after the things of God. That is a prerequisite for God to do things in your life, for God to deliver you, for God to begin to show you things that you didn't know, for God to catapult you to your next level whatever your next level it is whether it's it's that he wants you in ministry whether he wants you to be somebody that is in the position of authority to be able to change policies or whatever god has spoke over your life but saints i want you to in the meanwhile get your bibles i am talking to you so that meanwhile you can get your bibles Get everything that you need, pen and paper, because we're going to go to the word of God again to receive impartation directly from the mouth of God. He's going to speak to us today through his word and the ministration today, saints, particularly is dealing with the mark of rejection. If you are a person that you are a believer and you notice that everywhere you go, you were rejected. You go to apply for jobs, they all reject you. You go to apply for credit so that you can start a business, rejection. Oh, you want to get married. You are at that age where you are looking for a partner, rejection. Everywhere you go, rejection from you, as you can remember as a child in classroom. The teacher will pick everybody, but you will never be picked. You are somebody that is if it is if you were invisible. This is a curse. And we need to be dealing with this today, that today, as you leave this ministration, you will leave 
completely delivered that the lord who will the lord jesus will wipe away the mark of rejection from your life with his precious blood that you will no longer be suffering from rejection but you need the word of god because the only way we can be set free is by confessing jesus as our lord and savior and what else know his truth his word because the devil is as efficient as he is against your life uh, you know according to the level of ignorance and immaturity you have of the spirit realm through his word if you don't know the word of god you don't know what scriptures are telling you that you have been set free you don't know what scriptures to come in agreement with to in order to break free from the control of satan then you will remain under his control and dominion under his authority today we are dealing with the mark of rejection here so saints i know that sometimes people who are not believers also join the live stream because the title is captivating and perhaps is what they are going through in life so be mindful that we could have among us people who have not yet accepted christ let us be you know mindful of that and being the spirit of intercession so that the word will set them free okay so saints i am going to read first book of isaiah 53 3 isaiah 53 3 he was despised and rejected by mankind a man of suffering and familiar with pain like one from whom people hide their faces he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Am I talking to somebody today? Is it the word of God telling somebody's story? Is the word telling you your life story? Is the word telling you what you have been going through? Can you relate? Is this what you are struggling with? Is this what is getting you down, depressed, and now you are on medication? You are now suffering the effects of the humiliation of the kingdom of darkness. Oh yes. You are despised and rejected by your fellow man. Everywhere you go, people look at you as if you were covered in feces. People don't want to associate with you. Oh yes, and because of this rejection, you are suffering pain because now you can't get a job. You are in poverty. You have to depend on people to feed you. People to give you some money to pay your rent. You are suffering great, great affliction in your life. You are like one who, from whom people hide their faces. You try sometimes to go and ask people to help you. Ask people to give you, um, you know, render some help. People to, you know, give you an opportunity. And they hide their face from you. They don't reply your text. They pretend as if they don't know you, although they, you were colleagues in university, colleagues in primary school, and you saw them on Facebook and you befriend them. And you said, perhaps they will help me. And they, will they, they are ignoring you. They're not, they, they are pretending they don't know you. They even have the audacity to write you back and say, I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know you. I don't remember you. Let me tell you something. This is not normal. Are you despised? And held in low esteem. Everywhere you go, people don't even want to listen to what you are saying. You go to a live stream. You go to, to, to a place to get a job. And people, the, the interviewer cannot even entertain you. This, it's like he's not even listening to you. Is this you? And now you are living a life where you are in severe depression. You are ostracized. You are lonely. Oh, yes, even within your family circle, no one values your opinion. No one cares about what you have to say. You are despised even by your family members. Is this you? If this is you, saints, I want you to tell you that you are living under a curse. And you didn't know. You are thinking that perhaps this rejection is just something normal that people go through. No, saints. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for you to be redeemed from this curse. The book of Isaiah 53, 3 is talking about the Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that he was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Oh, yes, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was 
despised and we held him in low esteem. Jesus, he was familiar with pain. His family rejected him. Oh yes, finally when his fate was sealed that he was going to go to Mount Calvary, his friends rejected him and denied him, being that Peter was the first. So I want to say this, saints, the reason why Jesus Christ of Nazareth came to this world, it was to pay for our sins. It was to be nailed to the cross so that every curse in your life will be broken forever by his power of giving himself away to die for you to pay your penalty. You don't have to continue to be despised by people. You don't have to continue to be ignored, ostracized, in pain, lack of opportunity, rejected. Jesus has died for you not to be rejected. Jesus suffered on that cross for you not to suffer and be in pain and in anxiety, in rejection, in depression. He prayed, he, he, he paid the penalty for you to be resurrected onto your purpose, onto your destiny, Onto that that God has spoken about your life. Some people are laughing as if all is well with them because they don't, they have never experienced pain. They don't know what it is to be rejected. Apply for a job and get no for an answer. Not only applying for one job, but two, three, four, and be unemployed for many years. Oh yes, suffer pain and rejection. They don't know these things. So for them, all is well with them. And they are f thinking that you are talking foolishness. I'm talking to you that you are tired of suffering. You are tired of applying for a job. No joy. You are tired of being rejected by mankind. Everywhere you go, it's like you were invisible. If it's not as if you were invisible, people despise you. People don't want to associate, affiliate themselves with you. People don't want to be of no help. And now some of you, you are relying on medication. Some of you have, are losing things every day, but you are not seeing a provision from God. If this is you, I have good news. You don't have to be under this affliction. You don't have to continue to suffer and be rejected by the enemy because it's the enemy that has cast a veil of poverty, of suffering, of rejection of, over your life so that you will, not go, you will not go forward. So I'm here to say, saints, if you are suffering greatly, and you are saying, I've had enough. I need a touch of the Lord upon my life. I need to come out. You are coming out today in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he ha has experienced the curse. He took the curse upon himself to set you free. You don't have to accept to be rejected. Accept to be in suffering. Accept to be ostracized. Accept to live in poverty because you can't have a job. You cannot start your business. You cannot do anything. You are paralyzed. You don't have to accept this. Provision has been made available to you. For you to receive salvation. For you to be set free. All you need to do is come in agreement with the word of God. Accept him. Accept him with all your heart, your soul, and your spirit. And begin to prophesy over your life. Say, Lord, you are despised and rejected by mankind. So that I could live the blessing. I could be the recipient of the blessing. You suffered for me on that cross. You were rejected and despised by mankind because of me, for my sake. So, Lord, let the blessing begin to manifest in my life. Wipe away this mark of rejection, Lord Jesus, with your precious blood. I am tired of this situation. Begin to prophesy. So, I'm here to say, saints, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God came to give us life and life more abundantly. He has come to set us free. He has come to give us a new beginning. He has come that we can start afresh. I don't care what you have done in the past. What sins you have committed. Perhaps your forefathers or your parents are still living under demonic and satanic control because they are still going to these witchcraft places, 
They are not committed to Christ. They are not believers. I don't care. If you have confessed Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you said, Lord, from henceforth, I no longer want to be serving the enemy. I want to serve you. I have good news. The Lord your God has paid the penalty for you, has suffered for you, has given his life for you. Glory be to God. We don't have to accept the rejection. The minute you begin to feel that something is not in place, something is disturbing you, something is blocking you, something is paralyzing you. Isaiah 53, 3. Read it and say, Lord, I refuse to be in this condition. I refuse to be rejected. Rejection, you are not my portion. Rejection, I'm not your candidate. I curse you off my life in Jesus' name. I cover myself and my destiny with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. The blood of Jesus speaks of my advancement. The blood of Jesus speaks of my success. The blood of Jesus speaks of my deliverance. I refuse to cooperate with what the enemy is speaking against me in Jesus' name. The word of God comes to give us a level of authority against the kingdom of darkness. The Bible says that he, he, Jesus has given us power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means do us any harm. What does it mean? By your word in Jesus Christ, Satan has to flee. Curses are broken. Yokes are broken. Oh, yes. And the power of God has to be manifested in you. Some of you, you are afraid of praying. You are afraid of declaring. You are afraid of receiving God's deliverance because you think that is only a pastor that can pray for you. It's only so and so that can declare a word over your life. It's a lie of the enemy. The Bible is here to give us all authority in Christ Jesus. The Bible has been released onto humankind so that we will know what is freedom and how to sustain a life of freedom in Christ Jesus. I'm here to say, saints, if you have noticed there is a pattern of failure in your life, of rejection, everybody is going ahead. They have applied for jobs, they were successful, and they are working. They have applied for scholarship, and they got it. Some of you even think that are yours by inheritance, that you can see that this is, this is what God has given me. You cannot receive it. We are going to break it today in prayer using this scripture. You can begin even now to receive this word and begin to say, I come in agreement with your word, Lord God. I am set free, Lord God. I receive my deliverance in Christ Jesus. Let's go again, saints. Book of Isaiah 62, 4. Isaiah 62, 4, saints. Let us go. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hephzibah. And your land Beulah, for the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be married. Glory be to God as a promise that God has made to you. How do we inherit God's blessings? By accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior. The minute you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have left the curse to live in the blessing. Oh yes, you are no longer accursed in the land of the living. You are no longer living in poverty, limitation, stagnation, lack of achievement, reproach. You are already living in the blessing. You have died for this, for, for this world that is a fallen world, a world of many sorrows, a world of pains and sorrow, and you are resurrected, catapulted to the kingdom of God. That is why the Son of God was made manifest. That's why he came in the first place. Oh yes, so that while they were nailing him on a cross, they were nailing your curse, your disease, your poverty, your pain, your sorrow, your rejection to that cross. Come in agreement with the word of God. He is saying that because you have accepted my son, because you are now covenanted to me, you don't have a covenant with Satan. You are now in a new covenant, in a new agreement established on that cross of Calvary. No longer will they call you deserted. No longer will people tell you, oh, you're poor. 
Oh, you look how poor you are. Look how you don't have nothing. No, no longer will they call you deserted. God is saying, I'm wiping away your shame, your reproach, your pro poverty because of my son. Oh, yes. Your name will no longer be desolate. You know, you know what desolate means in despair. Having nothing, having no hope. God is saying, I'm changing that evil ordinance that Satan spoke against you. Oh, yes. And the Lord will take delight in you. Do you know what is to take delight? He will have pleasure to bless you. He will look at you and be happy. He will look at you favorably. And your land will be married. Meaning what? Everything that you do will prosper because you have found favor before God. He's now looking at you favorably. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians they are, that we are to God the fragrance of Christ. Oh yes. When God sees you, sweet fragrances enter his nostril when he sees us. He has delight in us. He rejoices in us. He has pleasure in blessing us. Some of you, you don't know what this is. Your life has been of sorrow and pain and lack. No more in Jesus' name. The curse is broken today in Jesus' name. And if perhaps you have never confessed Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want the curse to be broken because you want to experience the blessing of God, you want God to delight in you, accept Jesus. This is your opportunity. Don't reject him anymore. Don't say no to God anymore. Say, Lord, I am tired of this life. I am tired of being the rag doll of the enemy. I'm tired of being his rag. He messes with me day and night and I have no authority. It ends today in the mighty name of Jesus. You don't have to be afflicted anymore. You don't have to live in sorrow anymore. You don't have to come in agreement with what Satan is speaking against your life. Do you know how many of you come in agreement? When you begin to sit down and, and complain to God. Oh, I guess this is how I'm, I'm going to live my life. This is how I'm going to end my days. You are cooperating with the devil. You are standing in agreement with Satan to destroy your life. You will never see the blessing. I'm afraid to tell you, you will never see the blessing. Because every day you sit down to come in agreement with the kingdom of the darkness. To come in agreement with what the enemy of your soul has spoken against you. And that is why you are under curse. You know what is to be blessed is even when you see that the enemy is messing with your finances, the enemy is trying to come against what you are doing. You can still sit down and begin to say Isaiah 62, 4, God has delight in me. The Lord says that I will be married in the land of the living. The Lord has spoken over my life that I'll no, no people no longer will call me deserted and my name will not be desolation. The Lord is, has spoken over my life. I come in agreement with what you have spoken over my life and I curse rejection and I curse what the enemy is trying to do against my finances and I curse everything that the enemy is trying to do against my children. Be very careful, saints, not to come in agreement with the kingdom of darkness. Some of us Christians, we think that we, by complaining, we can get the attention of God. No, you are getting the attention of the kingdom of darkness. When you begin to murmur and complain, demons summon around you. Satan begins to send hosts of demons and fallen angels to summon around you. So that why they will come in agreement with you. You, will, you are congregating with demons if you are constantly complaining, doubting God, glorifying your problems, magnifying your, your shortcomings more than God. And instead of you saying that, look, I can see that Satan is trying to wrestle against me. I can see that he's trying to come after me. Let me get my Bible. Let me get the word of God and rebuke him off my life and curse him and come in agreement with what God is teaching me. You are giving Satan permission to continue to do what he has you know bestowed over your life whatever evil be very careful saints because although you have accepted christ as your lord and savior don't deny the work of the cross by murmuring complaining coming in agreement with evil 
you tried something for two, three days, it's not working because you are frustrated. Your mouth is talking foolishness. Oh, perhaps God, God only bless so and so. Perhaps God, perhaps only God blesses this person and that, and I don't qualify. You are disqualifying yourself from, from what God has spoken over your life. You are now beginning to doubt the work of the cross. It's not good enough that Jesus nailed all your, your sins and your curse. Because what happens when a, when a man is in sin against God? Automatically, curses land your, your, your head. You know why we should never walk in sin and never entertain sin? Because sin has a mandate to, to attract curses to your life. If you are living in sin and you are comfortable in that sin, you are cursing yourself. You are allowing the curse to land on your destiny, land on your glory, land on your eternal life so that you will not see Jesus when you die. Be very careful. Don't think, oh, this gospel is for those who are not in Christ. Some of you, although you have confessed Christ, you are not in Christ because your mouth it's not coming in agreement with what God has said about you. Your mouth is not coming in agreement with the finished work of the cross. Your mouth says something else. And your heart says another. Although you confess Christ, you are glorifying the curse. How many people you know that are Christians, they say, oh, perhaps God never made me to do this. Perhaps God never had a mandate to do this. It is written that we can do all things through Christ who strengthen us. But you don't want that word. You want to glorify what the enemy is doing. Guess what? The enemy will always come after us. That is why God has given us scripture. So that when we sense that something is not in, in alignment with God's word, we bring it back into alignment. We have authority in Christ Jesus. You've noticed that, look, this month, something is wrong with my finances. Let me investigate through the lens of the word what it is that I did wrong this month. God will speak to you. Sometimes God will bring a word into your, 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 your mind. To remind you of something that you are not doing right. So that you do what you repent. You notice that look this month I'm having a lot of trouble at work. Lord what it is that is wrong. God will begin to bring a word. Or God will, be, will confirm the word by somebody preaching. And you heard the preaching and you can see this is the indeed confirmation. Yes. So you are to come in agreement with the word of God. Instead of sitting down and complaining and crying and telling God how miserable you are, how defeated you are, tell Satan where to go. It says go to the pit of hell, pack your load of poverty, pack your load of disease, pack your lo load of limitation, pack your load of sadness and sorrow and problems. Take flight. Go back to the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever. And never return against me again in Jesus' name. He will go. Because in the name of Jesus, by the mention of his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That demon of poverty has to confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and leave your finances. That demon of infirmity will have to confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And he will have to go back to the pit of hell with this disease. Follow me again, saints of God. Book of Jeremiah 1.19. Jeremiah 1.19 says of you and of me, they will fight against you, but they will not overcome you. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Oh, glory be to God. The enemy is going to come to fight your health. He's going to come to fight your children, your finances, your career, your business. He's going to try to fight everything. But guess what? The Lord says, fear not, for I am with you. I will rescue you. Are you in the pit of debt? Are you in the pit of poverty? Are you in the pit of infirmity? Are you in the pit of divorce? Are you in the pit of lack, unemployment, homelessness, whatever it is? Guess what? 
I am with you, that says the Lord, and I will rescue you. God is here to rescue you from that pit. He promised. He declared it. Is God a liar? Can he not do it, saints? What he has promised? Can he not do it? Is it too difficult? Is your situation too difficult for God? Oh, yes, you are owing money to the bank. You have not yet paid your mortgage. Is it that difficult for God, the creator of all things, seen and unseen? Is it too difficult? Is it too difficult for God to restore your marriage? Is it too difficult for God to give you that job that you have been applying and, and fervently pray? Listen, does God, listen, what does God say about his children? He is a faithful rewarder of all those who did diligently seek him. You have been doing everything right. You have been praying. You have been avoiding sin. You have been rejecting evil company. You have been sowing seed. You have been giving your tithing and your offering to God. You have been doing everything. Do you think that God does not see you? Do you think that God can promise you something and not do it for you? If he said that he will fight against those who fight you and you will overcome, is he not seeing your fight? Is he not seeing your struggle? Is he not seeing you fighting to keep a roof over your head? Is he not seeing you fighting to keep your children on a narrow path? Is he not seeing you fighting to put food on a table? Does he not see you? He sees you. And he said, I will, I, you will overcome because of me. The Bible says that the Lord our God, he makes sure his word comes to pass. He doesn't sleep, no slumber. He makes sure that everything that he has promised his children comes to pass. For how long will you continue to live in disbelief? For how long will you continue to allow Satan to speak against you? Speak against your children. Speak against your career. Speak against your marriage. For how long? And, 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 and that is not enough. You are sitting down to cooperate with him. You are sitting down, standing in agreement with the evil plan of Satan against your life. And you even cooperate with the agents of darkness that you call your best friend. You are calling them to tell your problem that, look, I've, I, I don't know what is wrong with me. I've been doing this and doing that and it doesn't work. And they have the audacity to speak against you and say, oh, perhaps, you know, God, you know, you've done something wrong. Perhaps God, perhaps God doesn't want to bless you at this time. Let me tell you something. You are entertaining even the angels of darkness. You are receiving impartation from the enemy against you. Even if, listen, the Bible says here, Jeremiah 1, 19, they will fight against you. Some of you are fighting poverty. You are fighting unemployment. You are fighting an infirmity. You are fighting disobedience in your home. You are fighting against a divorce that is about to take place. But God is saying what? That will not overcome you. And so what? They are fighting you. They have to fight you. He's the enemy. That's why we call him the adversary. That's why we call him the enemy. Because he comes and fights the saints. He comes and fights those who have a mandate to crush his head. But the Lord is saying, don't worry that he's fighting you. Don't worry who is fighting you. How they are fighting you. They will not overcome you. Oh yes, they will not overcome you. They cannot overcome you. Because why? He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. The enemy has to do his job. The Bible says that when he comes like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard. He comes after us. How many of you all of a sudden your finances are doing something completely different than what God has ordained? And you have to say, look, I'm going to raise a special offering this month so that whatever is fighting my finances will be completely dead in the mighty name of Jesus, will not find a foothold. I've done that many times. How many of you, you've noticed that you are extraordinary tired? Is something in your health. It's like your body is no longer strong enough 
and you go to the doctors and he tells you, oh, this is happening, this is happening. And you have to gather yourself in Christ and say, by his stripes I am healed. You have to begin to speak over your body. You have to begin to tell your body to come in alignment with the word of God. And you have to tell that disease to come out. Go back to the bottomless pit. Don't return again in Jesus' mighty name. How many of you? How many of you have to rebuke the devil in your home because Satan is now using people in your family to come against you and you have to tell that demon to come out? Come out. I'm, I'm rebuking you. Lord Jesus, come to my home. Bind that demon that is oppressing my household with the everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire. Cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever and ever to return again to this home. Some of you, you have noticed that the enemy is attacking your work, you in your workplace. You are in warfare in your workplace. You are in warfare in your business. And you say, look, God, I can see that the enemy has come to afflict me in this area. So I'm now going to go on a fasting. I'm going to fast concerning this issue. And you fasted and you began to pray and come in alignment with the word of God. And then things began to fall into place. There are some Christians that I'm tired of praying. I'm tired of fasting. Be tired then. We will continue to go on. Because we know that the enemy doesn't get tired. Neither he gets weary or he takes annual leave. He is after me and he's after you. And if you are tired of prayer, you are right at the place where you, he, he, he wants you to be. He's clapping his hands with his demons and he's getting his pitch, pitchfork ready for you. You that is tired. You that don't want to pray anymore. You do, that don't want to do anything for God. You that don't want to do your, I'm tired now, I've had enough. I've been saved for 20 years and I'm fighting. Who tells you that the fight ends? That there is an end? Listen, we will end this fight with the enemy when we die. That's the day that will end. You are alive. You are in warfare, saints. And if you are not in warfare, you are about to go. Oh, yes. If you are not facing anything presently, you are about to go into something. If you are coming out, prepare for the next one. That's why Sister Dalila comes here every day with the word of God. So that you will not give up. So that you will not say, oh, um, you know what the devil does? He frustrates you left, right, and center because he's not after your job. He's not after your finance. That, that doesn't concern him. He just wants it for you to give up your prayer life. He does not want you to fast anymore. He wants you to see the things of God irrelevant so that you will lose your power, your realm and mantle of authority in Christ, and then you will lower your guards. Then he will come to finish you off. Oh, yes. You pick what you want. Either you pick your sword and fight or you sit down and allow the enemy to come with his pitchfork and begin to pitch you left, right and center. And because you have no authority, he will give you his last punishment because some of you, you started well by saying fire, fire, fire. And he's upset with you. That's why the, the, the book of Ephesians tells us to be pre always prepared with the full armor of God as Sister Lori has just said. If you are not ready for the battle, Satan will have you for lunch. And not only you, he's coming after your children. Some of you, you think that because you confess Christ in church and you say a little prayer, you don't have to pray, you don't have to fast, you don't have to go and, and do the things of God anymore. You can sit, that is a passport for total relaxation. Oh, I'm living in a blessing. Yes, the blessing has been given to us, but we are to take possession of it by fire and by force. Because the enemy is going to try and wrestle with your glory, wrestle with your assignment, wrestle against you. He's not happy that you have received Christ. So he wants to have control and dominion of your life. Because he was driving you mad before. Yes, he had dominion over you. You were smoking for him, drinking for him. You were committing all sorts of things for him. You were doing many sins against your body for him. And he was happy with you because you were his good vessel. 
And now you confess Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have left those things. And you think that he's going to leave you alone? Do you really think that he's going to leave you alone? Now that you have rejected his kingdom, you said to him, I want no business with you. Then you are his number one enemy. So don't think that the enemy is going to leave you alone. That the enemy has no business with you. Listen, he has made you his business. Oh yes. He is not worried about those in clubs. He's not worried about those who are in sin. Those who are doing his will. It, you are his problem. Oh yes. Because you are less one to go to hell. You've escaped. So don't go back to him. Don't go back. No matter what afflictions you are going through, no matter what it is that the enemy is doing against you, guess what? The Lord your God is saying in the book of Jeremiah 1 19, they will fight against you but will not overcome you. Fighting means what? You are in a fight, but that doesn't mean that the enemy will win. When we watch a boxing, those of you that like box, you watch a boxing match. It's not over until that bell rings in the end and then the, the victor is proclaimed. Because even when somebody gets knocked out, they can still get up and knock out the other person. Oh, yes. So don't think that because the enemy is, is shifting you, is, is troubling you, that he has the upper hand. No. The, the Bible says, whose report do you believe? Why does the Bible say that? Because the enemy has his report. And he presents you with his report so that you begin to doubt God. That, so that you begin to think that you are living under a curse. So that you will begin to deny the power of Jesus Christ. And the finished work of the cross of Calvary. And begin to live in defeat. I'm here to say that no. The Lord has promised you victory. And you will be victorious in Jesus name. Book of Galatians 3.13, Saint says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. Oh yes, you that keep saying you are cursed. You that keep saying that God is not blessing you because you were a curse. You that keep saying that, oh, my parents, they were pagans. They were not obeying God. And that is why I'm a curse. You deny the power of God. You deny the power of the finished work of the cross. You are denying it. You are insulting God. When you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know what happened? Do you know what happened? Do, can you grasp the depth of what happened. You received God's blessing because he was punished for you. Oh yes. When you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus is our, our intercessor. He goes before the Father with your name. And he shows his marks. That he was nailed on that cross for you. So that every curse. Every evil pronouncement against you is immediately washed by his blood. So by you saying that you were cursed, that your finances are cursed, that your children this and that, and you glorify the, these things that de they are demonic. You are saying that Jesus, he, not, he did not trade places with you. That is what you are saying. You are insulting God. Carry on. The Bible says Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. You were under a curse before accepting Christ. The curse was in full operation against you. And therefore your access to God was barred. Denied. For it is written. Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. Therefore what? Curse, Jesus made himself a curse for you on the course of Calvary so that you could live in, a, in blessing, so that you could live a victorious life. So be very careful the things that you are confessing to the spiritual world because what we confess with our mouths has impact in the spiritual. It does something. A manifestation will come out after that. 
The Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Have you been speaking life over your situation or death and curse? What is it that you are speaking? Come on. Oh, you've been attacked a little bit in your finances. Now you are saying that you, your finances are cursed. You've been attacked in your marriage. Now you are saying that your marriage is a curse. Listen, whatever a man sows, he shall reap it certainly. These things that you are speaking against your life and, and this and that, you are going to have a harvest and you're not going to like it. Are you speak, speaking the blessing or are you speaking the curse? What it is that you are speaking? Are you speaking the blessing or are you speaking the curse? Listen, you that don't want a woman to exercise authority against you, kindly come out. I never invited you here. Leave. I said I want to exercise authority against you for what? Do I know you? Leave. You eBay less. You are less. So just continue. Saints, you can see that the curse is in full operation in people's lives. So much they are a curse that they deny the power of God. Don't deny the power of God over your life. Don't deny the power of God over your life, saints. Because this is how you come in agreement with the enemy. This is how you make yourself available to the enemy. Some of you, the enemy had no access over your life until the day you said something you confessed something and you began to be in, under his authority and dominion do you remember when the disciples were on that boat and there was a massive storm and jesus was sleeping under and they went to disturb our master that there is a storm and we're gonna die and this and that and you are here sleeping and what not some of you are like that. You are going through storms in your marriage, storms in your finances, storms in your business, whatever storm you are going through. You are beginning to deny that Jesus is on your boat. You are beginning to deny that Jesus is the captain of your sea. You are now saying to Jesus, how can you see me in this situation and you don't do nothing, Jesus? Listen, if Jesus wasn't doing nothing, you would be dead. Do you really think that you are alive because the enemy? Do you really think you are alive because the enemy is, is, is happy that you are alive today to listen to this ministration? Some of you that like to talk foolishness. Just because you are going through a little wind in your finances, you are denying God. Just because your husband said something that he's going to serve you some papers or your wife said that you're going to serve you some papers, you now are denying God. Oh, God does not love me. If he did love me, why am I going through this? You don't know the Bible. Jesus himself said to us, in the world, you will have many afflictions. Did he not say that? But Jesus has given us the power to overcome every affliction in his name. Don't worry about what people are saying. Oh, look how so-and-so was, was making money and then not making so much money. Oh, look how so-and-so now no longer has this. And don't, don't worry about those who have become a mouthpiece for the kingdom of darkness. Listen to the word of God and stand in agreement with it. Don't worry who is saying what, who found who to say what. This is the report of the enemy. We are to believe the report of God. And what is the report of God for you today? The report of the Lord is in Galatians 3.13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. You don't have to accept that curse. You don't have to accept what the enemy is speaking against you and your children and your family. You are what God says you. You know who you are. It's in the Bible. You are who the Bible says you are. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 62, 4, that no longer will they call you deserted. This is what you are. Or name your land desolate. This is the report that God has for you. But you will be called Hephzibah and your land Beulah. For the Lord will take delight in you. And your land will be married. 
God has delight in you. Get up and begin to praise him. Oh yes, praise him like there is no tomorrow. Because he died for you on the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood for you. He accepted to be a, a, a curse because of you. He left his glory, his kingdom to come here as a mortal man. To be born in a manger. With being in a manger where animals were, were, were given water to drink. That was his cot. Because of you and because of me. Why should you accept what that filthy animal is saying about you? Oh yes. Somebody says, oh, perhaps somebody has cursed you somewhere. And so what? We have, we can tell their curse where to go. We have the power. Oh yes, somebody's doing witchcraft against you. Tell the witchcraft to return to sender. Somebody has put, put something in your doorstep. Get your anointing oil, anoint and sweep it and say, Lord, as I sweep, I'm sweeping it back to return to them. Back to sender by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Your husband is telling you foolishness. Your wife is telling you foolishness. You know what you say? You still have to come in agreement with the word of God concerning my life. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. So whatever you are saying, darling, I am blessed either way. And so are you. And sit down and see Satan being defeated. Your child is talking foolishness. Lay your hands over them. And say, Satan, this is not your candidate. Get out. Come out back to the pit of hell in the mighty name of Jesus. Your boss has given you a, a report, something about your performance, whatever he is saying, because some of these bosses, they, they work for Satan themselves. If they are not saved, Satan is their master. Take that report, anoint with the oil, put that anoint and says, Lord, this is not who I am and this is not what you have spoken over my life. Glory be to God. You said that you have delight in me in your word. And you said that I will be married in the land of the living. This is what I take possession. So my boss and whomsoever has wrote this letter has to come in agreement with what you have spoken over my life in Jesus name. Oh yes. Take authority. Stop crying. Wipe your tears. Get up. Take a shower. Put your very best dress. Put your very best suit. Stop complaining. Stop living like you don't have a future. Stop living like Jesus did not die for you. Stop walking with your head down like you have no authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. Stop looking at your bank account and cry. You are a child of the covenant. You are the one that God has called to know something that the world does not know, which is salvation, which is everlasting life. Stop behaving like the world is your end. This is not where we're going to end. We have a destiny. We have a place. He has gone to be prepare a place for us. Stop crying. Open your Bible. Stop listening to these prosperity preachers that are telling you that when you are not a Christian, when you are a Christian, you will have no problem. Satanic. Always be. Pre if a man is prepared for war, he will be undefeated. Oh yes. When 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 you have soldiers going to war, they don't go in the spirit of oh, I'm just gonna relax. They are ready for whatever. You should be ready for whatever. The enemy has sent an arrow. Tell the arrow to go return to sender. The enemy has sent witches. Tell the, the listen. Send the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn the assemblies and the covens. Tell them what who you are. Oh yes. Pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Take your mantle of authority. Stop calling your pastor because your husband is talking rubbish. Stop calling your pastor because your wife is acting up. Where is your faith, man of God? Where is your faith, woman of God? Oh, yes. Instead of you coming home and entertain and turn on the telly to listen to this foolishness that goes on on telly, get your Bible. Oh, yes. You, you are cooking, put the Bible up, the audio Bible on. Begin to come in agreement with the word of God. You are tired of suffering. You are tired. Tell the devil who you are. Remind him of who you are with fire and vengeance in prayer. Oh, yes. 
Stop confessing defeat because you are not a defeated foe. Jesus had to go to hell, get the keys from Satan and redeem you there as well for you not to be defeated by him. Stop accepting to be slapped left, right and center. Every witch come and slaps you left, right and center because you are, you've muzzled yourself. You put a muzzle on your mouth and you don't speak the word of God anymore. Stop it. God has a plan over your life. And until you begin to live in authority, until you begin to confess the scriptures, witches will come and slap your left, light and center. Witches will come and take your blessings and speak all manner of ill over your life. Listen, Jesus has already done what he needed to do. He was nailed on that cross for you to have authority. Do you want him to come and rebuke what he has given you authority to rebuke? Do you want to come and do what he has given you the authority to come and do? Come on now. You know that somebody is doing witchcraft against you. Instead of you in the name of Jesus, begin to pray against it. Begin to send the Holy Ghost fire to the camp to destroy the activities. You are sitting down crying and complaining to Jesus. Jesus did not give you that mandate. He told you that in my name you shall cast out demons. You shall pray for the sick and they will recover. Oh yes. Stop living a defeated life. Stop calling your pastor every little thing that happens in your home. You cannot rebuke it. You are waiting for somebody to do it for you. Some of these preachers are telling you that only their prayer is valid. Only their prayer cloth is valid. It's a lie from the enemy to paralyze you. Meanwhile, while you are waiting to connect with the man of God, while you are waiting to do for him to pray for you, he is already doing what he needs to do because you don't take authority. He wants to keep you in permanent silence. Sister Choma, God bless you for the gift. May the good Lord increase you and open doors for you that you have never seen before in the mighty name of Jesus. Those of you that contribute to my calling. May the good Lord always visit you and respond to your need. Take authority. Stop crying and complaining to God. What he has already assigned you to do. What he's already commissioned you to do. He said that in my name you shall cast out demons. He did not say pastor so and so, prophet so and so. He said in my name. Stop believing those people that, is, that listen, there is, I have to, oh gosh. Do you know what really hurts is when I get messages from elderly people that are, are, are asking the pastor to pray for them and, and pray deliverance for them and the pastor is charging them money. Can you believe that deliverance ministers are saying they have a list of how much and how much they are charging people to pray for them? And, and this is what really gets me upset is when some God forbid, I don't want to say bad words. Some people come to my live stream to say all manner of stuff about me. But they don't go after those people. They dare not to go after those people who are doing this evil. A young lady told me today, called me that she has no money. because She, she, she went to the deliverance minister and charged her money after the deliverance service. What sort of deliverance is that? Stop giving people your money. Jesus Christ has died for you on the cross of Calvary for the remission of your sins. For you to no longer be living like a curse. For you no longer to live under the control of demons. For you no longer to live under the authority of Satan. It's up to you what you will do with that information, saints. It is written in the Bible. If you think that you don't agree with me, fair enough. Go and read Galatians 3.13. Wake up. Stop paying your, your pastor's school fees for his children that go to a school that your kids don't even have access to. Stop it. Stop sending your money for them to buy Mercedes and buy vehicles to parade themselves as, as peacocks. That is not the gospel of God. No man, no woman should charge you for nothing. If you give something to me here, Sister Dalila, it's because of your heart you want to give me. And I'm going to tell you, saints, I'm going to give you a report. Because some of you might think, oh, what is Sister Dalila do with the money we give? I'm going to tell you. The money that you give me here on this live stream, donations that you give me, I'm being transparent. 
and I can show anyone receipts. I buy food for my household, right? Because this is full ministry. I'm here all day. I'm listening. I'm counseling people. I'm praying. I'm preparing the ministrations. I have, I have to be here. Number one, I buy food for my family. I buy clothes for my children. And I pay my, my bills. I need a phone bill. I need to pay my phone bill to be able to connect with you. All right? On the live stream. That takes money. I have to pay for my phone bill. You know? And any other little things that come like internet and these things. I don't have a Mercedes. I don't. Do you know I don't have a driver's license? I don't drive a car. I don't have a car. My husband has a car. It's his car. It's not mine. Right? I take public transport when he's not around. I don't have a Mercedes Benz. I don't have any other. Any of this flamboyant stuff. Because I'm not a liar. I'm not here to come to lie to you. Oh, give me this, give me that, and you'll be delivered. Because I know that I will be doomed to hell. This is it. If you give, it's because you feel sorry for me. You say, but let me give to Sister Delila. Let me help her ministry. But I'm not here to blackmail anybody. Anyone who is telling you, oh, this is how much for deliverance. Tell them where to go. They're already doomed to go to hell. How are they going to pray for you? The Bible says it doesn't matter how much you prophesy, how much you pray and do all these wonderful things, speak in the language of angels. If you have no love in your heart, you have nothing. You have to love your fellow man and woman that is suffering. Somebody's telling you that, look, I am living, I'm suffering, I'm going through this. And you cannot have a word of prayer with them unless they pay you. What, what sort of people are these? And these are the people that you are following them. And these are the people that never get attacked. But they come here to attack me. I am here to say, saints, that Jesus died for you on that cross of Calvary. That by the mention of his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Satan and his curses need to live your life because Jesus already died on that cross of Calvary. When you mention his name, the curse has to live and the blessing takes place in your life. When you mention the name of Jesus, whatever demon is doing what, or witch or wizard, they have to go back to the pit of hell in the name of Jesus because it is his name. His name speaks of your salvation and your deliverance. You are covered by his blood. Stop listening to lies and foolishness from, from these people that are lying to you. And because of that, you are depressed now. Because you, if so-and-so does not pray for you, if so-and-so does not say this, you are now living like a defeated foe. These are lies from the enemy. Oh, yes. They are abusing you and they are keeping you in bondage because you know why these, these false preachers and false, false prophets, they have to keep you in fear. Because as long as you in fear, you will give them all you have and work for them. True word. Come on now, saints. As long as you are living in perpetual fear that you are under a curse. Listen. <clears throat> how can a person always is in delivering service? Have you noticed how these delivering, the deliverers of hell, I call them deliverers. Because they are delivering people to hell every day. How can a human being that has given their life to Christ, they are being delivered every day that is delivered, they are being de in delivering service. I'm sure there must come a time where you confess Christ, Satan has to flee. Did they not, did, does not the Bible says that resist the devil and he will flee from you? So for how long are you being going to be in delivering service? Some of you, you have been saved. Hmm? You have been saved, somebody that is giving your tithing. May the good Lord bless you and increase your fruits. I will see your name later so I can pray for you. You need to understand something, saints. If any man or any woman is keeping you as the, as, as, as the, with the banner of being your spiritual leader, banner of being your pastor, and is keeping you in deliverance every day, so every day is praying for you to be delivered. What, what kind of finished work of the cross is that? Hmm? Come on now. Makes no sense. What deliverance process goes for two, three, four months? And by the time they finish with you, you have no home. 
You have no, no finances. You have nothing to look after your children. I saw a pastor the other day saying that use your credit card to give money to this ministry. Does he not know that credit card is a debt? Does he not know that being in debt is a curse? So he's telling you to be a curse in the land of the living for him to have money. How does that apply to the word of God? How is that the word of God? Single mothers that have no help on welfare. You are telling them to take the milk to give their children and their money to pay for their rent to give you? These pimps. I am here giving you the word. Galatians 3.13 Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. We are not a curse. Just because the enemy is troubling you, just because the enemy is doing little something, something, that does not mean that you are accursed. That does not mean that you are not redeemed, that you are not under the blessing of God. You have been adopted into the kingdom of God. You are his child. Can your child of God be under any curse? Huh? Your pastor is telling you that there is a curse over your life. Well, you've accepted Jesus two decades ago, three decades ago, and you are praying and you are confessing Christ, but you are always under a curse. Tell him to go and read the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. We are here gathered as believers because we know that the enemy attacks us and we pray against him because we are at war. Unless you are a new believer. Those of you who have not accepted Christ and you are happy with your sin, I'm happy to say that you are living under a curse. And until you come into the covenant of Christ, the curse will be operating against you. Oh yes. Another thing is that sometimes when you are struggling in any area of your life, sometimes it's because you have allowed sin to creep in. Something you are doing that the enemy, the, the accuser of the brethren, is using that to accuse you before God. So ask God to show you. That's why we pray, God, search me. Search my heart. Show me the areas of my life I'm allowing sin to come in. So that you can repent. Some of you, that you had parents that were involved in your cult or are involved in your cult. You have to pray harder than other saints. I am sorry to say that. You are going to have to pray every day when you get up. You say, Lord, whatever demonic agreement my forefathers had, altars they have erected, pronouncements they have made, and has attracted a curse to my bloodline. Lord, I want to confess to you today I have no fellowship with, you, with it. I renounce their covenants. I renounce the demonic altars. I renounce whatever they have promised to the enemy. I have no fellowship with it. I am not under those curses in the mighty name of Jesus. You that have parents that were in certain societies or grandparents that were witches in my case, for example. I come from a bloodline of people who are highly involved in the service of the occult. So when I get up in the morning, I said, Lord... Whatever altar that is out there erected by my forefathers that is beginning to speak ill of me because I'm refusing to cooperate with them. I curse them in the mighty name of Jesus. I reject them. I have no fellowship with it. Then I begin my prayers to God. So the word is giving me leverage against the enemy. It's giving me the upper hand. Oh, yes. Yes. You begin to say every altar that is demonic that belonged to my forefathers speaking against me. I silence you with the blood of Jesus. Oh yes. Begin to speak. If you don't speak, that means the enemy, he, he, he has leverage against you. You're not speaking the word of God. So therefore you will have advantage. Saints. Let us always pray using the word of God. Stop being a vain babbler. It's time to pray. Get your Bible. Say, Lord, it is written of me. Satan, this is written of me. This is who I am. I am blessed because Jesus, he made himself a curse for me. So leave my finances. You have no 
No place in my life. You get leave my children. Pack your load and your disobedience. Leave my kids. These are not your children. They are children covenant to Jesus. I gave them to Jesus. They are under the blood. Begin to speak. You don't need somebody to come to your home to speak for you. Take authority yourself. You the brothers as well. You are the head of your home. Stop relying on your wife's prayers. Is your wife that always goes to prayers and, 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 and is your wife always praying for you and for the kids? Take your mantle of authority as the, the, the leader of the home. Begin to take authority over your home. Do you know that there are blessings that only the head of the home can, can pray? Oh, yes. We have to follow God's instructions and, and laws that we cannot violate them. Jesus is the head of the church. All right. And after Jesus is the father of the home, he is the high priest of the home, then the mother and then the children. There are certain blessings, ladies, that your husband has to bestow upon the household. You cannot bypass God's hierarchy. Oh, yes. Tell him to look. You are the head. Today is, is you are conducting prayers in this home. You are praying for the children today because they are misbehaving themselves. I have no authority anymore. You need to use your mantle of authority. Oh, yes. You ladies that you don't have a husband. You had a child out of wedlock. Go to your father if he's alive. Boy is misbehaving. Your girl is misbehaving. Take to your daddy if he's alive. Say, daddy, I have no husband. And I'm still technically before God under your authority. Pray for me. Pray for my children, dad. Come on now, saints. There is no excuse for us to allow the enemy to come and slap us left, right, or center. For the enemy comes and tells us where to go, when to go, what to eat. Like he has control, has power. Jesus has died for you. If you are living like that, it's because you want. After this ministration, there will be no excuse. Oh, yes. And always confess your sins to God. No matter how small your sins are. Suppose you covet something. You saw a sister with a nice dress. And for minutes you covet. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me. It's the flesh, Lord. I sinned against you. Forgive me. It doesn't matter how small. Because the enemy will use that small little sin that you have not confessed. To come the next day with a hundred demons to flog you at night. So you get up in the morning now you're sick. He's a filthy animal. He looks for, for gaps. For, 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 for opportunities to come and attack the body of Christ. Oh, yes. Some people need to forgive. Forgive your parents that they had a belt and beat you. Forgive them. They, they try their best. You are not a thief. You are not a criminal. You are in the narrow path. Oh, yes. I thank God for my mom that, that had a belt. And she slapped me left, right, and center. I've never stole anything. I'm still here. I have respect for the elders. When I see an elderly person, yes, ma'am, no, sir. If I see an elderly person, I acknowledge them. So that she did a good job. Stop hating your parents. Oh, yes. Some of you, your children are the ones who come to slap you at night because you have no authority. But our parents will never allow that foolishness. Some of your children, they can't go to shops. They will collect things. We couldn't do that. Listen, when we were growing up and we were going to someone's house or a wedding, there would be a meeting in the house. My mom says, if I see you doing anything in that wedding, look, you're, listen, I will be ready for you. And we will go to that place and behave, sit down at the table with good table manners, wait to be served, addressing the lady that is there serving the food with great respect. Look at Gen Z generation. What's up? That's how they talk to their mom and dad. Oh, yes. I saw a boy the other day calling an elderly man. What's up, Godfather? This is how they talk. Right? So stop hating your parents because they did something. Because they had belts. They had, they had sleepers. They were trying their best. Oh, yes. And if they did something wrong, you yourself, you are not a perfect son. You are not a perfect do daughter. So stop, you know, hating them. I know some parents were abusive saints. Don't get me wrong. And you need therapy. Forgive them still. 
and move on. Ask God to deliver them from whatever is oppressing them. Stop living in malice and in hatred. You are a person that you hate everybody. And that is why the blessings of God cannot land. It's not that you don't have. Do you know that some people have blessings that are just hovering and cannot land? And you know why they don't land? Hatred, malice, disobedience, disrespect. So how is the blessing going to land? A, a good thing, to a plane to land has to have a good and a, a runway that is clean and doesn't have any obstruction. Some of you are seeking for revenge just like how Sister Winnie is saying. Oh yes, if I get him, look what I'm going to do. Some of you that are recruiters, when a person comes to you looking for employment because they did something to you in primary school, you say you are not going to work here. You are not going to get a job here. And that is your mindset. That is why you cannot go forward. This is why the children of God are in bondage. Disobedience. You know the word. You know the scriptures. You pray very well. Yet you in disobedience against God. He's told you to forgive and you don't forgive. He's told you to do something for a brother and sister. But because you don't like them, you, you are not doing it. And you are not blessed. Because you don't follow God. You follow what you want. There you go. How is God going to bless you? It's not that God does not want to bless you. But does God has. Listen. The word of God says this. That he has delight in certain servants. Can you grasp the magnitude of what God is saying here? Book of Isaiah 62. 4. The Lord, the Lord is saying. He takes delight in you. Can you sit down and say God takes delight in me? With the things that you are doing. Confessing the name of Christ. But you are, you are in fornication. Confess the name of Christ. You are an adulterer. Conf confess in the name of Christ. You are in astrology. Confess in the name of Christ. You are doing with your board. Confess in the name of Christ. You are making things difficult for others. Confess in the name of Christ. You are stealing. You are lying. You are deceiving. But you are confessing the name of Christ. What you need to ask yourself is. Does God have delight in me? Is God pleased with what I am doing? Is he okay with the way I'm living my life? Ask yourself that question. Some of you need to ask. Oh yes. Oh I'm rejected everywhere I go. It seems like I'm invisible to people. It seems like wherever I go. Favor is far away from me. I can never break through. I can never do anything good in my life. Are you doing good for others? Oh yes. When people see you. Do they see, do they see a reflection of Christ? Or they see somebody that is filled with hatred. Arrogance. Listen, whatever a man sows, he shall reap. Some of you that are facing this rejection and everything, you need to confess Christ as your Lord and Savior. Make a firm commitment with Christ so that you will be your intercessor before God. So that the curse will be destroyed in your life and you can pass from the curse to the blessing. And you will see that that rejection, that suffering that you are going through, it will vanish. It will end. Yes, you will have problems every now and then. But the hand of the Lord will rescue you. God is going to fight for you and give you the victory. Oh, yes. You need to, to see what it is that you are doing wrong. Some of you, you are be so busy judging other people. You don't judge yourself. Sit down. Say to yourself, am I a good person? Am I really following these things that Jesus is saying? Do I love others or do I, am I a hate, a person filled with hate and, and all this different jealousy? Or am I a person that is trying? And if you are suffering from hatred, jealousy and all these things, take it to the cross. Oh yes, nail it to the cross. Say, Lord, I know that I'm lazy. I know that I'm a person that I'm jealous. I know that I have a tendency to lie. I don't want to commit these sins anymore. I'm nailing them to the cross. I don't want to live like this anymore. I want a higher standard that you have for me, Lord. Be transparent. You know, people who are transparent with God, they will attain mercy. Oh, yes. Remember David. Why was David's heart a heart that was so pure that Jesus, God says that he's got a heart after me. Why? Because every sin that David committed, he says, Lord, do not take your Holy Spirit off me. Do not cast me away from your presence. 
I know I have sinned, Lord, but I'm here and I'm repenting. And God had favor for, for David. God heard this cry. But you think that you are hiding sin. Listen, don't worry. You can hide from your pastor. You can hide from sisters and brothers. You can do whatever you want. But you cannot hide your mess from God. You will go under that, underneath that carpet where you are hiding all your mess. And throw it in your face. Repent. Come to Jesus. You are married, but you have somebody on the side. But you confess Christ. You are married, but you are lying to you, your spouse that you've gone to the gym. You have not gone to no gym. You are somewhere else with somebody. But you want the house of your dreams. You want a new vehicle. You want a new career. It's not going to happen, I'm afraid. Unless you repent. Some of you here, when you listen to Sister Dalila and preaching the gospel, you feel on fire for God. But the minute you come out of the live stream, you've gone to consult astrologers. Your sign, what is your sign saying about you this month? What is the tarot reader reading about you? And then next day you come back again. And you wonder why your life is in a mess. You wonder why you have nightmares, you cannot sleep, you have no peace. You make your choice, saints. Those of you men that are here saying that I shouldn't exercise authority against you, I'm not. If you feel that this is not a ministration that a man should be listening to, kindly leave. You are still blessed either way, saints. Don't worry. Hallelujah, Jesus. Saints, it has been an intense ministration. And I hope that those of you who have haven't made a commitment with God. You can make, make a commitment with God. Somebody saying bye. It's no bye. Prayer. You don't pray? Time to pray. We are going to pray after this. So that yokes can be broken. So that those who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. Will be reconciled with our Father in heaven. Oh yes. Another thing I want to say saints. If you go to a church, you attend a, a church and your spiritual leader, your pastor or bishop is not preaching about sin, the condition of your heart, is not telling you to repent, find another place. Because the reason why many believers are living under curses is because of sin that has not been addressed. They think that because they did it 20 years ago, 30 years ago, God does not remember. God remembers everything. You have to confess your sins to God. Confess. I'm not telling you to confess to a human being. Confess it to the Lord. Tell him how sorry you are for what you did. And repent. Because you don't know if you have tomorrow. I could be speaking to you here today and the Lord at night will call me home. And tomorrow you're going to hear, oh, Sister Dalila, she has passed. She's gone to the Lord. Oh yes, it can happen. No one is immune. There is an appointment that, that, we, that we all of us, we're going to have to keep. You cannot dodge that appointment. Are you ready to meet Christ? Are you ready, saints? I am ready. If he calls me home today, glory be to God. I've made up my mind. No matter what I go through, I am ready. If I'm alive to be here to preach the gospel, glory be to God. But if he calls me home, I know that I will transcend with him. Be ready, saints. Don't think that because your wife doesn't know, your husband doesn't know, your boss doesn't know, that you will, you will, you, God is not seeing you. All of us, we want to be blessed. But you, are you a candidate for the blessing? Have you met the prerequisites to be blessed? You cannot bypass God's word, God's commandments, God's instructions. No. You can cheat here in the land of the living because this land belongs to Satan. But you will not do it in the afterlife. Glory be to God. 
Father, Lord, we thank you for today, Lord God. We thank you for this word, Lord God, about the rejection. These demonic and satanic curses that oppress the children of disobedience. That although they have confessed Christ, some of them, they are still living in sin. They are allowing sin to prosper, to fester, and therefore the curse is following them like a stench. Oh, yes, Lord. Father, Lord, we repent from all of our sins that we have committed against you and those made in your image. The things that we have said, that we have done, Lord God, that we have confessed with our own mouths that is sinful, demonic, diabolical. Lord, be merciful unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember that your son Jesus was nailed to that cross to make us whole again, to reconcile us with you so that we will no longer live under a curse, the curse of the law and its implications, but that, Lord, we will live under the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Almighty God, I'm asking you today, forgive us. Be merciful unto us, O Holy One of Israel, Elohim. Oh, be merciful unto us. Remember, Father Lord, that we are sinners. We are nothing without you. We are nobody without you. We cannot live without your presence. We cannot live without your Holy Spirit. We cannot continue to sustain a life of holiness without you. Lord Jesus, fill us with your Holy Ghost. Oh, glory be to God. Father, Lord, let your Holy Spirit continuously minister to our hearts, our souls, and our spirits through true work of repentance. Oh, Lord God of Israel. We ask you to be merciful, Lord God. Some of us, our forefathers, were devil worshippers, priestesses and priests for the kingdom of darkness. They were sangomas. They were in certain societies. And because they were the children of disobedience, Satan thinks that he has a legal ground against us. Lord, we renounce their pacts. We curse their evil agreements. We break the agreements that they make. And we make a confession unto you, Lord God of Israel, that in the name of Jesus, we are breaking the agreements. We are smashing the evil altars. We refuse to cooperate with whatever evil agreements our forefathers made. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have been redeemed by the finished work of the cross. Oh, yes. By confessing your son, Jesus. Oh, our sins were nailed to that cross. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We worship you and we honor you because you sent your best, your son, to pay our penalty for us. Oh, yes, to bestow blessings over those who are not in disobedience, but they have come into agreement with your son. Your word says in the book of Romans chapter 8, 1, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Oh, Satan has to leave us alone because we bear in our bodies the marks of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. Lord, speak to us today, Lord God. Minister to us, to our hearts, our souls, and our spirits. So that, Father Lord, whatever sin we have not confessed, we will be able to remember. Confess it. Nail it on the cross of Calvary. And be set free, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God of Israel. Let all bitter water flow out of my of our ways. Father Lord, be destroyed, be quenched. Oh yes, dry by the fire of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. We break the power of any demonic curse, spell, jinx issued against our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Every witchcraft degree and pronouncement against our staff of bread be cancelled and be reversed. By the blood of Jesus, by faith, Father Lord, we confess that everything that the enemy has spoken against our spirit, our hearts, our souls, oh Lord God, our assignment, our glory, and our children has to die today in the mighty name of Jesus. Every mark of hatred is wiped off from our lives by the power of the blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. Every curse of non-achievement in our lives break by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. All our blessings that have been eluded, oh Lord God, 
have eluded us, begin to find your way back to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Any power that has interchanged our stars, we command you to reverse it and die by the power of the name of Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Every witchcraft network within us be scattered by the thunder fire of God and die in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, reveal to us today the source of all of our problems in the mighty name of Jesus. We refuse to follow evil predictions from the enemy and his agents in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil arrow fired against us, jump out and go back to your sender in the mighty name of Jesus. You, our prayer lives, receive Holy Ghost fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil contamination in our dreams affecting our lives now be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Every dry bone in our lives receive life in the mighty name of Jesus. Every foundational padlock break, break, break by the fire of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. Every seed of poverty in our foundation, die in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil foundation, strong men, die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. We separate our lives from every stagnancy in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Every serpent and scorpion in our foundations, die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil food that we were fed during our naming ceremony or when we were children we vomit out in the mighty name of jesus we nullify the effect of every evil food we were fed as children in the mighty name of jesus every foundational witchcraft garment of poverty be roasted by the fire of the holy ghost in the mighty name of jesus every strong man every far pharaoh goliath oppressing us from our father's house from our mother's house assigned to waste our efforts upon the affairs of our lives be wasted by the fire of the holy ghost in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus every foundational covenant curse and bondage of poverty from our father's house and our mother's house break by the blood of jesus break by the blood of jesus in the mighty name of jesus every foundational curse of slavery break by the blood of jesus break by the blood of jesus break by the blood of jesus every evil name attached to our lives in the spiritual be cancelled by the blood of jesus father lord give us a new name to manifest your glory just like how you did it to jabez do it to us god do it again, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Change that evil name that is associated, Father Lord, with non-achievement, poverty, limitation, shame, disgrace, reproach, rejection, and give us a new name. Oh, Lord God, we plead with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, give us a new name. Give us a new identity, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every environmental witchcraft strong man assigned to reduce our lives to nothing. Die in the mighty name of Jesus. Die in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil trinity militating against us in our finances, in our health, in our career, in our business, militating against our children and their education and their behavior, Lord God, in our environment, scattered by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, purge our foundation with your fire in the mighty name of Jesus. You, our inner man, receive fire now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every satanic deposited in our lives, transmitting us to the kingdom of darkness, be uprooted in the mighty name of Jesus. Be uprooted in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything representing us in the kingdom of darkness, catch fire and die in the mighty name of Jesus. Catch fire and die in the mighty name of Jesus. Catch fire and die in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power claiming ownership over our lives, receive the judgment of the fire of God and release us and die in the mighty name of Jesus. We recover back every good ground we have lost to the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, by your mercy, by your grace, restore us back to our original design. 
Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, Lord, let deliverance begin to take place. Wipe every mark of shame, every mark of reproach, every mark of rejection, Lord Jesus, with your precious blood. That as as your children confess you as Lord and Savior, Father, Lord, your blood will begin to cleanse them, sanctify them purify them and give them a new identity oh lord god wherever they were once rejected father lord they are wearing a new garment of excellence oh they are wearing a new garment of favor unmerited favor lord god where they have submitted paperwork i speak over their lives in the office of the prophetic lord they are receiving a positive response in the mighty name of jesus lord manifest your power manifest First, your anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy in the lives of your children, Almighty God. Let yokes be broken. Let evil foundations receive the fire of the judgment of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for salvation to take place. I pray for deliverance to take place. I pray, Father Lord, that you will not allow the kingdom of darkness to have an upper hand against us. Oh, Lord God of Israel, every demonic agent trying to initiate Initiate my altar of prayer into Lucifer. I curse you in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. This altar of prayer will not be contaminated. This altar of prayer will not be contaminated. Children will be delivered. Oh Lord God, yokes will continuously be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, as this ministration, Father Lord, took place, that many are going to be those who will repent of their sins and come in agreement with you. And Lord God, and be cut supported from the curse to the blessings by the acceptance of you Jesus as the Lord and Savior Father Lord redeem and release your children from every bondage that they have been oh Lord God subjected from their were children Lord God in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus provide a way of escape Lord God oh Oh, Lord God, release your children, oh God. Release your children from the hands of the wicked one. Release your children, Father Lord, from whatever the enemy is trying to do against them. Father Lord, I come against every evil and satanic pollution of their destiny. Cleanse it with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. Let them begin, Father Lord, to manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Father Lord, we command the enemy to go back, return to the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever and ever to return against the believers. Never to return against the saints. Holy Ghost fire consume the enemies of our soul. Holy Ghost fire consume and judge the enemies of our destiny. Holy Ghost fire consume the enemies of our greatness and stars, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Saints, I know if you I don't know if you had the opportunity and to see that there is somebody that comes every now, now and again and the name is Lucifer. I'm going to tell you what it is that they are trying to do. They are trying to contaminate the altar of prayer. By giving that little money, they think that they will have access to this altar of prayer so that souls will not be delivered, so that yokes will not be broken. But I curse it in the mighty name of Jesus. This altar of prayer does not belong to me. Belongs to Jesus. Jesus is already arising and fighting them one by one. You can see that the enemy is not happy with such ministrations. I've been telling you that the enemy is always observing what saints are doing. So let this be a testimony to you. That the enemy may try. But he will not have the upper hand. He will not succeed. Because we have a covenant with Christ. Therefore, he arises and he fights for us to give us the, the, the victory. The Lion of Judah shall give us the victory over and over and over again. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. There is a lady here. You have gone to a place to seek for powers to prosper. And they made incisions in your body. And at night, where you have received those incisions, they use a blade to put some things into those incisions. At night, you feel as if fire is in those places and you feel heat and like a fire and you feel very uncomfortable. God is telling you to repent. 
Repent that you've gone to consult that sangoma that has made incisions into your body and applied a certain ointment or herbs to establish a covenant of wealth. Jesus is saying that he sees what you have done. You ought to repent. He's giving you a new chance. Identify yourself by writing capital me. You that have gone. You went to a, a witch doctor and the witch doctor made incisions in your body for you to be able to prosper. That is what led you to go to that place. Write capital me. Don't be ashamed. This is the gathering of the saints and we are all here for deliverance, for God to speak to us. And God is speaking to you specifically that you need to repent. You need to confess to Christ that you did this. Write capital me. And as you write capital me, the Lord will set you free from that covenant because you are coming into alignment with God's purpose for your life. You are accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Therefore, you are rejecting the curse and you are breaking the evil agreement that you have made with the kingdom of darkness. But this can only take place if you write capital me. You have to write capital me. Receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Father Lord, as this believer has just renounced the kingdom of darkness, renounced the agreement by means of that incision. Father Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus, they will be released from the covenant. Lord Jesus, let your blood begin to justify them, purify them. Let the Holy Spirit, Lord God, convince them of their sin and bring them back into your purpose so that they will know you, so that they will have, Father Lord, fellowship with you and pass from the curse to the blessing, Almighty God. To have fellowship with you and to obey you and to serve you, almighty God. I thank you, Father Lord, for all that you did. I thank you, Father Lord, for all that you are doing and about to do in their lives, almighty God. I thank you, Father Lord, for this wonderful work of salvation that has just taken place, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. There is a lady here. You just found out that your husband, he is... um having an affair oh yes and you are you don't know you are in the fence whether you confront him or whether you just ignore and continue with your marriage god is speaking to you today you can never be comfortable with sin you have evidence you are to confront your husband about it the only way god can restore a marriage god can do something we have to confront sin for what it is. If the enemy is hiding somewhere, we have to expose him. You are going to have to confront your husband. Write capital me so that God will give you the strength, guidance and anointing for you to be able to confront him about this issue. But you need to write capital me. And as you write capital me, I will pray for you in agreement. And the Holy Spirit receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Father, Lord, the sister that is in this predicament, I pray that you will give her wisdom, Lord God, through your Holy Ghost, that she will, Father, Lord, confront her husband, Father, Lord, concerning this situation that is taking place. Father, Lord, if the enemy is not exposed, he will continue to prosper. So, Father, Lord, I'm asking you that you will expose, that you will help them, Father, Lord, to expose this to the husband, Lord God. And that the Holy Spirit will take over, Father Lord, and restoration of the marriage will take place, Almighty God. Father Lord, I pray that you will guide them, that you will give them the courage that they will no longer speak by themselves, but the Holy Spirit will speak through them the right words, Father Lord, to address this situation properly. And that your will will be done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, for all that you did. There is a lot of you here. And as the ministration was going on, God was telling you that the reason why you are facing all sorts of rejection in your life, it's because of the sin of an aliving a, a, a newborn in the womb. I'm not allowed to say the technical name. But you unalived your own child. You unalived them. Oh yes, you didn't bring the pregnancy to full term. You terminated it. That is your sin. So because you have rejected your child, you are now walking the face of the earth rejected because of their sin. 
as you confess your sin, write capital me. And the Lord that we serve, that is a merciful God, will visit you today to forgive you, to restore you as you confess your sin. He is forgiving you and he is restoring you. The Lord was waiting for this time for you to confess, for you to understand that what you did is wrong and you need his forgiveness. I pray that the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That that sin of, and guilt that has, has come because of the sin will be nailed to the cross today in the mighty name of Jesus. There is no sin that is too big for God not for, to forgive you. He has given his son so that we all can be forgiven. No matter how, how our sins are as a scarlet, he has forgiveness for us. Oh, glory be to God. As you ask God to forgive you, watch God make you sore in your career. Watch the mark of rejection being wiped away. You are no longer going to be rejected. Some of you, your careers are going to go. Some of you, your careers are going to go into a next level. Some of you, your finances are going to be repaired. Blessings will begin to flow in your life because you, take, you took a step to repent. Glory be to God. You are being restored. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father Lord. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Ghost. Thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you for always, Father Lord, extending the, the mantle of forgiveness to us every day in Jesus' name. There is a person here. You have decided that you are going to take your own life because you are tired of suffering, tired of rejection, tired of not being able to go forward. The Lord is asking, have you tried Jesus? Try me and you will never thirst again. Render your life to me and you will never thirst again. You are on this live stream. You are not yet a believer, but something is drawing you to this, to the ministration. And you've stuck with me. You did not stuck to me. You stuck to God. Write capital me saints. Right, capital me, you're the one that you've decided that you're going to take your life after this ministration, that you no longer want to live. Jesus is saying, why don't you try me? Oh, glory be to God. Jesus says, try me. You have tried everything and it did not work. Try me today and test me if I'm not good. Glory be to God. Surrender your life to Christ. If you surrender your life to Christ, you will notice that you will have a peace that surpasses all understanding. Don't take your own life. The enemy does, knows that you have a great future. He knows that you have been called by God. But today as you try Jesus, oh, glory be to God. As you try Jesus, your life will never be the same again. Begin to confess, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And as, Father Lord, I confess you, forgive my sins. Oh, Lord, I'm tired of suffering. Restore me, Lord. Transform me, Lord. Make me a new creation today, Lord. I want to experience what others are experiencing, Lord God. Don't cast me away from your presence, Lord. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the enemies defeated, Lord. The enemies defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, baptize your children with your Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord God, fill them with your presence. Oh, Lord God, you are the fountain of the living waters, Lord God. Those who drink from your fountains will never thirst again, Lord God. Restore them, Lord God. Uplift them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is a lady here. You live with your mom. Yes, you have, you have fallen into hard times. And you have gone back to live with your mom. But you have been taking money from her purse to buy little things because you are having pride. And you are stealing from your mother. Repent. How is God going to bless you if you are doing these things? Repent. I can see you taking money that your mother puts aside in some sort of drawer. It's brown. And you are taking this money. Repent. Go to your mom and say, Mom, I'm apologize. 
There were times I went to your draw and took some money because I needed to buy little things for myself. And if you repent and you confess your sin by writing capital me, God is going to make a, open a door of employment for you. God will begin to sort out your life. But he cannot do it when you are doing these things and you are committing sin. You are smoking certain things. You know well and good that you are in, 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 in rebellion against God. God cannot bless you as long as you remain in rebellion. He can only bless you if you confess your sins to him. You come broken before him. Repent by writing capital me. I am not going to go on and on and on. It is your life. It is your interest that you go forward in Christ, that you are not depending on somebody to feed you, to clothe you. Glory be to God. Somebody just confessed. Father, Lord, as they confess, restore them. As they confess, Lord God, make provide a way of escape for them, Lord. As they repent, Lord God, reconcile them back into your presence. I pray that the Holy Spirit, Lord God, will not allow them to go back to their vomit. Because it's the Holy Spirit that convinces man of their sin. It's not another man. So, Lord, I pray that they will, Father, Lord, you will restore them, Lord. You will give them hope, Almighty God, that you will restore their lives, so, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. You that repented, confess to your mother, apologize, and say, Mom, please forgive me, and bless me that my life will go forward. And watch your life change. Some people doubt in God. If you want to doubt God, doubt God. If you think that God is not in this ministration, it is your portion in life. I cannot force you. It's the Holy Ghost that calls the children of God, it's not me. So if you don't want to believe that it's your portion, it is not my business. Saints, I'm about to go. And before I go, I want to say this. Don't go back to your vomit. Don't come out of the ministration to go and do the same things that you were doing. All right? I want to know that souls are going to Jesus. I think I have accomplished what I came to do here. Those of you that are here for the first time, you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've confessed your sins. Get a King James Bible. Begin to read the word of God. Begin to pray. Call upon the name of the Lord and he will save you. The Bible says that those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You continue to walk in a narrow path. Continue to do that that God has, is telling you to do. All right. Secondly, if you want to see what we have done before, the the uh, here on my bio, the you, you will see that there is a YouTube icon. Subscribe to the page. So that if you miss any ministration, because I know some of you work, or sometimes life happens and you won't be able to be here. Don't worry. You just, you know, go there over YouTube and you will watch and pray. All right. Thirdly, saints, if you have been urged by the Holy Spirit to give to the, this ministry, the information is also on my bio. The PayPal is there. Saints, I, as you go, I want to speak a blessing over all of you that are constantly on this platform blessing me, praying with me. I cannot do this without you. If you don't come here to pray with me, then what will what good is that I'm here? It's not, it's not, it's not going to profit anything, isn't it? So I'm here to say, saying something that is going to change your life. Don't worry about what others are saying. Be in agreement with God. And the Lord will continue to smile over you the lord will continue to bless you the lord will continue to keep you all right father lord in the mighty name of jesus i bless everyone that is on this live stream today 381 people are here lord god father lord i'm asking you wherever they are on planet earth visit them today lord god father lord manifest your presence father lord in in their location let them begin to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let them begin to experience your peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord Jesus, I cover them with your precious blood. And I speak over their lives that it shall forever be well with them, both in the land of the living and in the afterlife. Father Lord, I'm asking you that you will shine your face upon them and be merciful unto them. 
Father Lord, that you will respond to their needs. Father Lord, that you begin to open the, the floodgates of heaven to bless them, Father Lord. Father Lord, to, to deliver them, Father Lord, to fill them with your presence so that they will fulfill their purpose. They will fulfill their assignment. They will become that that you have called them to become. Father, Lord, I'm asking you for signs and wonders, miracles to take place, Lord God, that whatever they are believing you for, they will receive it and they will come back to this platform to testify. Glory be to God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us all pray the Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen, amen, and amen. Saints, Shabbat Shalom. God willing, I will be here tomorrow once again so that we can be in the presence of God and receive from him divine instructions. Saints, continue to pray for me. I am extremely exhausted these days. I don't know why. I'm just so exhausted. Just continue to pray for me as I always pray for you, saints. All right? Shabbat shalom and have a wonderful day.